Hey, everybody. It's Al Zay Calhoun with Coveted Consultant. Uh, thank you for making time to be on this Facebook Live today. For some reason, we just had a technical false start, so I'm actually starting again. So um, if, you are, uh, if you were live a moment ago, um, we're live again now. For some reason, Facebook crashed on us, and, and we're, uh, we're doing it again. So um, hopefully, the technology holds up. I have no idea why that occurred. Um, all right, so, so today, I'm warning you in advance. Today, I'm telling a story. So I'm, 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 I'm telling one, t t today is about one specific story. This story is new. It just happened in the last 24 to 48 hours or so. Um, so I'm, I'm telling you in advance, right? So you got to hear the whole story for it all to make sense. You got to hang in there. Okay. All right. So uh, the moral of this story, the moral of the story is what expertise sounds like. What expertise sounds like. We all want to be seen as an expert to our, to our clientele, but what does that sound like? And perhaps even more so, what does that feel like? So what does expertise sound like? That, that's what today, today is going to be about. Uh, before we get into that, uh, some, uh, some quick housekeeping. Uh, so what is this group, right? If you have no idea what, the, what, this, what this group is, right? So this, this Facebook group is uh, it's free. Clearly, it's on, it's on Facebook. I call it Marketing Leaders Lab. Why is it called Marketing Leaders Lab? Because I'm interested in working with people who are leaders of their company. Now, you may sell marketing services, but you run a company. You run a business, and you're in the business of selling marketing services. And what does that look like? What are those responsibilities? What is that journey? What, what is that about? And I'm excited about that conversation. Not the marketing hack or trick or secret or tool or thing of the day, but instead what you should be thinking about and doing every day so you can build a business that sells marketing services. So that's, that's what the group is about. And we attack this conversation from a number of different, of different angles, but I'm excited about your personal development. I'm excited about what happens to you. I'm excited about what happens with you. I'm excited about the role you take to build a company that's useful to someone else. That's a passion place for me. And so that's what the, what the group is about, what our dialogue is about. There's a link somewhere up, down, left, right, where you can uh, click to join the group. Um, you know, we, we can have some more dialogue. So. Uh, so that's that. That's one bit, bit, bit of bit, bit of housekeeping. Uh, second bit, if uh, if if for you it's now time to make the shift with your agency, uh, you're having trouble uh, hiring new people. You're having trouble generating consistent leads. You're having trouble selling a consistent service. If you feel like there's bottlenecks inside your agency and it's time to fix those problems. I have a program designed to help you do that. I believe an agency boils down to three main elements, client acquisition, client service, client retention. And the faster you get clarity around those three things, the faster your agency moves. And so uh, that's, what, that's, what, that's what we focus on inside the program. It is designed to be a sprint. It's not designed to be some uh, six-year you know, <laughs> journey is designed to be a sprint, uh, but it is also designed to be strategic. So we think some things through so you can get clarity on those things and you execute on those things inside the program. If you want that, if it's just time to do that, then please book a time so we can have a conversation. Uh, there's a link again, up, down, left, right, where you can click. Uh, you, might need, you might need to watch a training so, so that you can understand precisely what problems we, we solve in the program and how the program actually works. So you can watch that training to get, to get that full understanding. And then you can book time to speak with me. We can talk about the program and see if the program actually solves for your unique situation. So I offer that as a solution to this agency growth problem. So you ain't got to think about it, read 20 more videos or watch 20 more videos, read 40 more blog posts. If it's just time to deal, if it's time to decide, if it's time to fix it, I'd like to be a part of that. Then we can talk about how that unfolds. All right. Last bit of housekeeping here as I, as I get my notes together. Uh, I just want to give a quick shout out to, to some people who have specifically asked for feedback inside uh, Marketing Leaders Lab. Um, 
it requires some courage to put your services forward, to put a video forward, to put a thing forward and ask for feedback. Um, so uh, there's, there's, there's two names. I, I, took, I took the notes here. Let me, let me make sure I got the names right. So uh, John Johnston. Uh, ask for feedback. It was a video he was uh, using as part of his prospecting process, his client acquisition process. And he put a video uh, in, the, in the group and he, and he got, got some feedback. Um, some of it was kind of sharp. Some of it was kind of supportive. Some of it was kind of in somewhere in the middle, you know? Hey, man, but you don't get better unless you get, get, some, get some feedback. So uh, just salute to him for uh, uh, having the courage to ask for feedback. Uh, David Martin did something similar uh, a week or two ago. Um, he, uh, he offered his... Uh, service, you know, put a link in the in the in marketing leaders lab and ask and ask, ask ask some feedback on it, and he got got some feedback on it. So just again, salute to him for having the courage to offer your uh th- you know services, ideas, concepts up for feedback. Um, trying to do it all by yourself just doesn't work. Um, it just doesn't work, right? It just doesn't work. So this group again can give you some feedback on some of the things that that you that you're working through. All right. Um, so there we are. So there we are. Hey, Oliver's here. Hey, Oliver. So let's get into story time. Story time today. What does expertise sound like? That's today's headline. What does expertise sound like? So here's here's the story. So the story goes like this. And by the way, this is this is going on right now in my, in my in my life, right? So this is this is pulled, you know, right from reality. So in my house, my washing machine is broken. As of right now, this moment, my washing machine is broken. And this happened, we'll call it between seven and 10 days ago. I don't, don't recall the, the, the exact day, but I was actually washing my clothes and the washing machine just stopped working. You know, it just stopped working. Uh, so, uh, right, the washing machine's broken. So, so now in my house, I've got a problem, right? And, and I've got to figure out how to fix the washing machine. So I'm on the journey, right, of, of fixing the washing machine. Now, what happens when, when something like that happens? The first thing you do is emotionally you react to it. You're just kind of like, I don't want the inconvenience. I don't want the inconvenience, right? Like, <laughs> right? So, so there's that. There's that part of of the of the of the deal. Okay. Um, um, then, I, then you got to kind of think through. Okay, I got to I got to carve out some time to figure out what's going on with the washing machine and actually resolve it. So, when am I going to do that? Well, I was busy, so I had things to do, and I figured like this past weekend was going to be a chance where I was going to have an opportunity to fix the washing machine. By the way, uh, if you're joining late, I'm telling a story, right? Broken washing machine in my house. There is definitely a point to this story, but I got to tell the whole story so that, so that it makes sense to you. So if, you, if, you just, if you're joining late for some reason, I'm telling a story. You got to hang in there. All right. So now it also just, it just so happens that for me, I'm going on vacation uh, very, very soon. At, least at the time of, of me taping this video, right? I'm, I'm going on vacation very soon. So we got to wash our clothes. We can pack our bags. So we can go on vacation. So Washing our clothes for us right now has to be, happens to be of even more importance. So I got a thing, okay? So what do I do? I do what most people do. I have a, a, something, something's broken in my house and I have to try to fix it. So I'm on YouTube. I'm on the internet searching for a broken washer. Washer doesn't work. Washer doesn't agitate. Washer doesn't spin. And I'm doing the work trying to figure out what's wrong. I'm trying to self-diagnose, if you will. Self-diagnose my problem with my washing machine. All right, so I'm on this side, I'm on that side, I'm on this on that side, all the all these sides trying to get help with that. Okay. This take that process is about two or three days. Now it's not two or three complete days. I do it when I have time. So, you know, when I have a down moment, I grab my phone and I do a little research and I'm trying to figure out, you know, uh, washing machine broke, washing machine broke in, washing machine, you know it. When I then when my, when my work day is over, I grab the computer, I'm sitting down, you know, in front of the TV pecking away, trying to figure out the washing machine is broken, what happened, da, da, da. All right, so I'm taking notes, getting links. Okay, I'm going through the research process, trying to figure out what's wrong with, with the washing machine. So in the process, there's, there's, there's kind of um, um, uh, um, root cause number one that I was inter- introduced to. Oh, I'm, I'm supposed to put notes in the thing. All right, so hold on, hold on. I'm supposed to be tracking myself with these, with these notes. All right. All right, so I just talked about finding it online, right? I just talked about that, All right? And so now, now I'm into doing this myself and the problem being bigger than it looks, all right? So now I am trying to solve the problem myself. I got my YouTube, 
data, I got my videos already queued up on my phone, got my notes, I'm gonna fix this myself. So I have to go into the washing machine and, and uh, there's a pump that sucks the water out of your washing machine. So, but in order to get access to the pump, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to pull apart the washing machine. In my house, my washing machine happens to sit right next to the dryer inside a closet that closes. It's, and it's a tight fit, it's a snug fit. There's not a whole lot of moving space. That closet sits in a hallway that maybe can fit, you know, two of me side by side. So there isn't a lot of space, my point, is I'm trying to get access to the washing machine and there isn't a lot of space for me to maneuver. So when the, when the YouTube video says, just pull off the case, well, I don't have space to just pull off the case. I gotta get, I gotta jimmy myself in in the closet and try to turn my body while I get this stuff off. I can't see certain screws. I can't see certain access because I can't just walk around the my, my washing machine and just kind of look at the back of it. Tight fit. So this problem is getting a bit more involved than I'd like it to be. So, but I'm I'm, I'm gonna figure this out because got, we gotta wash clothes. So I'm 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 messing around with the washing machine tussle with the spacing of it, finally find a way to get the casing off of it so I can get access to this pump. So I get access to the pump and, and I'm supposed to check and see if there's something stuck in the pump, like a sock or a, some other piece of clothing that may have found its way through, through the tubing and clogged the pump. That's why water won't, won't, won't come out. Okay. So I get access to the, to the pump. I see the pump. Now, with their thing connect, connected to it and all that kind of good stuff, I have to – now, there's water still in the machine in some way. I've emptied most of the water out, but there's still water still in the machine. So I try to clamp the, the, the tubes that plug into the pump. I'm trying to clamp those tubes so water doesn't spill out all, all onto the floor. I clamp the tubes as best I can. I separate the pump. Guess what happens anyway? Water everywhere. So water's now spilling. I'm sitting on the floor, surrounded by tools, surrounded by wa uh, washing machine pieces, and there's water, right, all on the floor. So I'm screaming, ah, water. Wife comes to run and help, handing me bowls and buckets and such, rags and such to clean up the water, okay? Emergency avoided or, or averted. That's not that bad. All right, we continue. I check the pump, nothing in the pump. Pump's fine. Okay, so I reassemble the washing machine, try again. Washing machine still doesn't work. It fills full of water, but the next step doesn't, doesn't take place. Okay, so then, so then, hold on. Let me get, get, get my, my, next, my next note here so those, those are the, everybody can follow along. So now I'm back in YouTube researching again. So if it's not the pump, then what else can it be? Back in YouTube, researching again, trying to find pump or uh, washing machine fixes. So then I'm introduced to this to this thing called a a it's called a washer washer lid switch. Now you can tell by the, the way I'm having this conversation, I'm not a washing machine expert. It's not my expertise. I'm not a handyman. Not my expertise. I can figure stuff out. But this is not what I do every day. It just isn't. It's not my business. So, but it is my house. So I got to figure this stuff out. All right. So there's this thing. When you open and close your washing machine, you hear a click. We all hear a click. That's how a washing machine works. It's this thing that clicks when you, um, when you open and close your washing machine. That click, when you open the washing machine, your washing machine stops. And it stops on purpose. The washing machine, hey, Denise. The washing machine stops because the, you can't, you shouldn't be able to put your hand in the washing machine and hurt yourself, right? It's actively spinning, right? Actively spinning. If you put your hand in there, you can hurt yourself, or your clothing can get caught in it and kind of and pull you in. So that's that's why when you open the washing machine, there's a click and things stop. Okay, there's a device that does that, and that's called the the washer lid switch. There's a switch that that you hear clicking when you open and close your washing machine, okay? So, so the internet tells me that if it's not the pump, it's the washer lid switch. Sounds good to me. So now I'm back in front of my washing machine 
messing with it again. Got to make the space and open it up. And then, all right, trying to find this washer lid switch. So I find the washer lid switch and it's broken. It doesn't work. It doesn't, that, that clicking noise, it doesn't click the way it's supposed to. It's not switching like, it, like it's supposed to switch. Okay. So now here's where things get most interesting to you. Let's talk about expertise now. All right. So I got this issue with the washing machine, right? I'm telling you my story of how I was fussing and fighting with the washing machine, trying to, you know, get access to it, understand it, all that good stuff. Oh, by the way, sorry, what's important here? So I have to buy, because I, I found this piece, right? This, by the way, is a washer lid switch, okay? This little thing sits as you open the, the uh, washing machine up and down, it's this piece that, that's supposed to, uh, upside down, nope, got it right, right. So it's supposed to click down, and then when you, when you release the lid, it's supposed to pop back up. That's what's supposed to happen, okay? Mine was, this is broken, all right, cool. So now I'm on a journey this weekend, right, or this past weekend, trying to find a washer lid switch. So I go to Walmart, I go to Home Depot. And by the way, by the time I get through all this exercise and stuff, it's like Sunday at like five o'clock. So the, the, the evening is coming and most stores close early on Sunday, right? In the US, things close earlier on Sunday. So I'm running to Walmart. I'm running to Home Depot. Uh, and I try to get to Sears to get one of these things. Home Depot doesn't have it. Walmart doesn't have it. Sears, I get there too late. They close at six. I was there at like 6.02. Can't find one of these things. All right. So Sunday, I spent my whole Sunday f fighting with a washing machine. Great. So now Monday is here, right? Just past Monday. Monday is here. Still need this thing because my washing machine doesn't work. All right. So I call an appliance store, right? Because, because you know, companies, I, oh, I even tried Best Buy. Best Buy doesn't, doesn't sell this. You know that. I, I knew that too, but I had to go try, right? So you have to go to, to, a, to a special place to find this. You have to go to a special place to find this. Special place to find this. Okay. So I'm, I'm searching for appliance parts stores. I call, this is Monday. I make the phone call so that I can figure out if they have this or not. Because I'm excited to fix my problem. And what I want to do is take this, go into the store, find one that matches, you know, and run, out, and, and, and run back home and fix my problem. So I'm calling up to make sure, hey, do you guys sell washer lid switches? Okay, so, so now here's what happens when I get on the phone. I call the guy, hey, hi, I'm looking for a washer lid switch. Do you have one of those? He says, yeah. He said, that, that, does, it, does it have a, have a part number on it? Now I'm sitting by, at my desk at this point. I'm half working, half trying to figure this out. And I'm thinking to myself, when he asked me, does it have a part number on it? I'm thinking... I don't know. And I know you're going to ask me that. I actually said that out loud. I didn't know you were going to ask me that. So I go running upstairs to find my part so I can tell them if it has a part number on it. While I'm running to the, the washer lid switch, he's kind of mumbling to me. He's, he's kind of talking to me. He says, yeah, it's about a foot and a half long. Um, and um, it's going to have a number on it that begins with three. So while he's telling me this, I'm hearing him and I'm feeling confirmed. Because remember, I'm way outside of my expertise. I don't fix washing machines for a living. I don't know how to do this. So he's telling me it's about a foot and a half long. And I'm thinking, well, the part I've got is a foot and a half long. And then I hear him tell me it's got, a, it's got the number three probably as the first number. So when I find my, my part, go upstairs, and I'm looking at the part, would you know the first number is a three? Can you see that? Let me see if I can make that. I don't, I don't know if, if it'll if it'll uh, zoom in enough. But in any case, the first number is a three. So for me now, for me, I'm the client in the situation. He's confirming for me that I have the right part because he's ascribing it to me. He's telling me that the number is going to be on. I should read that number to him. He's telling me to do this. I didn't ask him. He's telling me. So I'm reading the number to him, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever number is on, is, is on here. Then he reads that number back to me, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because he's got a part just like this in his world. So he's on the phone looking, confirming that he's got the right part. 
right? Okay. Then, so then I, he mumbles again. He says, three, four, five. He's talking to me. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He says, yeah, uh, because in the last five years, they've changed the first number from three to four. So, uh, but it's still the same part. He's talking out loud. What does that do for me? I'm now being informed that when I come purchase this part, the part that I buy won't have a, a three as the first number. It'll have a four at the first number. So I won't go into the store in panic because the heart number is different because he just told me five years ago they changed the first number. All right. So then, so now that now that we've agreed, we've confirmed it's the right part, right number, um, um, and all that kind of good stuff, right? Then he says to me, he says, so the price on that is. And I, I can kind of picture him with the with the phone kind of you know tucked tucked in here, and I kind of picture him kind of going through his booklet or whatever it is, or typing on the computer trying to find a price. Um, you know, the, the price on that, the price on that is full stop. It doesn't matter what the price is. It doesn't matter what the price is. I just told you my story. I got a problem. I got something in my house that doesn't work. And so I need it fixed. I need that problem fixed. What it costs, the part, the, the, the price of, the, of this part to me, doesn't matter. The expert has already confirmed for me that I am in search of the correct thing. That what I'm trying to, the part that I'm looking for, he has, and he's done his part to confirm that what I have is correct. Whatever it takes to solve my problem. Right? It doesn't matter what the price is. Okay. Okay. It doesn't. Why doesn't it matter what the price is? Because I'm, I'm a motivated person who has a problem, who's trying to solve, who's trying to solve it. Right? I've called him and asked for a, a specific part. He, hit, he, has, he has confirmed for me that he has the part, it's available. He's also made it easy to buy. So not, so not only did he, did, he, did he describe it to me, confirm the part number, but he told me, he said, what's, the, what's your last name so that I can um, hold it for you? So I tell him my last name and he's hold, holding the part. My solution is waiting for me at his shop. All right, okay. That's why it doesn't matter what the price is, right? I have a solution to my problem, uh, right? Whatever, okay, okay. Let's try to bring that home. Why, 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 did, I, why did I tell this story, right? Why did, I tell, why did I tell this story? What the heck does my issue with a washing machine have to do with your particular business? The point of the moral of the story is to help you understand what expertise sounds like when i got on the phone with that gentleman from the from the from the parts store it was immediately clear to me that i was talking to an expert immediately clear to me he didn't tell me his resume he didn't tell me how long he'd been in business how many parts he sold before he didn't tell me about uh, uh how many washing machines he's fixed in his life he didn't tell me about how long the shop's been in business or how long he's worked there. I didn't get any, any matter of fact, I had to ask him for his name. He didn't even tell me what his name was. He answered the phone, appliance parts. That's how he answered the phone. So all that stuff that we typically want to put ahead in the, in the situation, all that stuff that you hold so much value in, your expertise, your experience, what you've seen, what you know, da, 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 all that stuff that you believe is so, so important and you want to push to the, for, to the front of the conversation, I didn't get any of that from him. I know nothing about that gentleman. I know his name is Brandon because I asked him. I don't know anything about it. But still, yet, the moment I picked up the phone, I immediately felt like I was talking to an expert. He gave me what I needed at the exact time I needed. He confirmed for me that what I was doing was the right thing. He confirmed for me that what I was looking for, he, 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 had, he had the solution to my problem. He, expertise, that's what I heard. I heard 
expertise. And in hearing that expertise, it settled my spirit. Man, I got the right part in my hands. I am holding the right part. He's got the right part. So I can drive down there and pick and pick pick up the part so I can actually try to solve for my own problem. In your business, do you talk to your clients in that way? Do they immediately hear expertise? Or do they hear someone trying to convince them of their expertise? Do they immediately hear expertise? Or do they hear someone trying to sell them a part for their, for their business? Do they immediately hear expertise? Or do they hear someone who was just trying to list off their resume? These kinds of conversations that I'm describing to you right now are not happenstance. It's not because he's just he just happens to be a nice guy and I just happen to be a nice guy and so therefore we had a nice conversation. That's not what I'm describing. What I'm describing is, a, is an intentionally designed conversation. Clearly, he's had this kind of conversation before. Someone calls up looking for a part, so he wants to confirm that what they what they are looking at is what he's got in his store and that the model numbers match up. And to make it easier for that person to buy, let's go ahead and put it on a shelf somewhere so they can walk in, buy it, and walk out. That should kind of sound like a productized service. Actually, be before that, and I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping the story up now. Actually, before that, for you and your business, appreciate that your prospective client has already lived a backstory. So for me, and that's why I told you, I had to tell you the, 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 the lead, up to, lead up first. I had to tell you that I, I'm fighting my washing machine right now. Washing machine is broken. I got, I got somewhere to go. I got to get my, get, my, get my clothes washed. I, I'm tussling with the, with, the, with, the, with the tight space. I'm having to be on YouTube. I don't really do this for real. You know, I don't know how to fix washing machines, but I'm trying, to, I'm trying to figure this out myself. I have a backstory, and that backstory has me with a real problem. Appreciate your client's backstory. They, they've got a problem too, and they've been trying to do it themselves on some level also. They've tried to research it on YouTube. They've tried to hire another agency. They've tried to figure it out themselves. And they were, if you follow the analogy, sitting on their own floor with all these pieces sprawled apart, water flowing everywhere, yelling at their wife for help. That's where they are inside their business right now. Do you even know that? Do you know that about the people you serve? Can you, can you appreciate that? Is, that? is that clear to you already? Is there a space where your potential client can explain that to you? Does that live in your business somewhere? Or do you just have them filling out templates and sheets and documents and you know, consult forms? You got to understand the problem facing the person you're talking to. Hey, Ahmed, you've got you've to understand, understand the problem facing the people you're talking to. And then when you understand that problem, confirm, just like Brandon did for me over the phone, confirm that what you have solves their issue. And then once you've done that, you can make it easy for them to buy. But what I'm describing to you is designed, y'all. It's designed. It's not the kind of thing you just kind of do naturally. You don't just pick up the phone and, you know, let's figure it out. That, that's crap. That's, that's junk. You've got to think about this more strategically. I, I, I began today's Facebook Live talking about the importance of you as the leader, and you have to design your business to work this way. This is not intuitive. It's not automatic. You didn't learn it in school. You've got to think about this very, very deliberately and put things in order so that when your client interacts with you, what they hear is expertise. And so when they hear that expertise, there are so many things in their world that now dial down. The fear, the concern, the worry, the blah, 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 all that stuff that we talked to, you know, that sales trick stuff, bull crap. When they hear expertise, their pressure, their blood pressure goes way down. And now it's just a matter of does what we offer fix what you've got? 
price doesn't matter. Am I crazy, y'all? Talk back to me, right? I'll be quiet for a second. I think I've got, I've got, um, um, I've got a couple of clo closing thoughts here for today's, today's Facebook Live. But if 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 you disagree with what I'm saying, if I tell this story, told my whole long story, and you're like Alze, it doesn't work that way. Alze, nope, that's not how it goes. That's not how it works, man. If you disagree with me, let me know. If you agree, let me know. If you've got a question about how to apply what I'm saying, how does it work? more specifically. If you've got that question, then I'll be quiet for a moment so you can so you can you can type type that type that in here. So while you're doing that actually, I've got uh, some questions that have, that have come through early. So I'll check these questions and then, and then I'll, we'll see if you've got anything for those who are live. So there were there were there were two questions that uh, that came in early. Uh, let me check the little question queue. No question queues. All right, cool. So there are two questions that came in early. Ahmed asked um, how to tackle the first meeting with the client where the gatekeeper is talking. Uh, you, you, uh, he's pursuing the uh, the dental niche and he's going for strategy consulting. Okay. So how to tackle the first meeting? There, there's a there's a lot to be said about that. Um, the short is. You got to understand what problem the business is facing. That's that's that, that's the that's the short answer there. How do you tackle it? Figure that out um, in that meeting. Figure it out. Okay, where the gatekeeper is talking. So if you're in a one-on-one -on -one meeting with a gatekeeper, you're talking to the wrong person. So if you if you know they're a gatekeeper and they know they're a gatekeeper, you're talking to the wrong person. So your job is to figure out what's necessary to talk to the correct person. Yeah, I mean, that that becomes the fundamental thing here. So dental niche, right? So I'm assuming, you know, you're, you're targeting a dental office and the first thing you've got to do is meet with uh, their administrative person um, who may also be a, a dental assistant. They may have some other role, but they're kind of, they're kind of the core admin person, right? Um, but they don't make, the, but they don't make the, fi the, the final decision. So you've got to figure out why you're talking to the admin person. And I mean this, I mean this literally. You need to ask them, so why are we having a conversation? And let them tell you, let them tell you, right? Do not, what the, what the gatekeeper is expecting you to do is sell them your services. They're expect, expecting you to lay out all these pamphlets and go through all these screen share things that you got, you know, these PowerPoint slides or whatever, and pitch them on something. And if you've seen any, any of my content, I am completely against that whole idea of pitching people things. The gatekeeper doesn't, uh, I'm assuming, they do not understand digital marketing. So trying to des describe all that is a non-starter. Number two, they probably don't understand the business problem well enough either. That person is a gatekeeper because they their job is to keep the gate. That's their job. Their job is to stop bad people from getting in. So you've got to immediately switch that switch that conversation. It can't you can, if you start selling your services and describing the 19 things you can do, you'll hate the conversation and so will they. And then you'll be out of there in 45 minutes with with no momentum in that conversation. So you got to figure out again what 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 their core problem is so you can move on. Um, yeah, right. So now now that I'm I'm back I'm back looking here. Uh, yeah, the gatekeeper checks fit. So, I mean, you know, this is me talking to you, Ahmed, but do they even know what fit means? You know, so again, they're assessing fit, but do they even know what, if if your services fit, do they even know what that means? So um, you've, got, you've got to have an, another kind of conversation. Now, bottom line, and I'll move on from, from, this, from this question. Ahmed, if you know you're having the right conversation with the gatekeeper when the gatekeeper becomes your ally, so you know you've had the right conversation when they say, this is wonderful. Let's get you on the schedule to talk to Dr. So-and-so tomorrow or, or, talk to, or talk to Dr. So-and-so on Thursday or whatever, whatever. But your job is to turn them into an ally. Don't turn them into an adversary. So I'm not suggesting that you, that you challenge the gatekeeper and push really hard and ask them all these tough questions and prove how smart you are. I do, I'm not saying be confrontational. I am saying be direct. I am saying be direct. Because you, both of you know that the problem is not going to get fixed in, the, in that interaction. You got it. You, yeah, point made. Um, 
So you, so that's how you know you got it right. You know you got it right, Ahmed, when, when um, that, that gatekeeper has turned into an ally and they are excited about moving you into, into the next uh, conversation, right? There's ways of doing this, but there, there's, the, there's, the, there's the concept. All right, great. So Denise, Denise asked the question, is it possible to productize a service but still have pricing flexibility uh, where I can customize the pricing for a client? All right. So, um, so Denise got, got, a, got a productized service, right? Um, can I have pricing flexibility so I can help a client make a decision? All right, it's your business. You can do whatever you want. That's to, to Denise and everybody else. It's your business. You can do whatever you want. Okay. In the spirit of productizing and the way I read your question, Denise, I don't like the idea of changing your price for a client because that, that's what I read. I don't, I, I don't, li I don't like that idea of, of, of or of customizing the price for a client. I don't like that idea. Um, um, if the client could solve their own problem, they'd be solving it already. That's why they're talking to you. If the client, because you're the expert, not them. That's why, that's why I call Brandon. He's the expert, not me. If the client fully understood what was needed to solve their own problem, then they could scope, price, and estimate their own problem. They can't do that either. So it's your job, because it's not their world, it's your world. So your job is to tell them what's required and how much it costs to get that scope of work done. That is one of your fundamental jobs. It's one of your fundamental jobs. Tell them, ass assess the problem, right? To give them the scope. Here's, here's what, here's what, here's what need, needed to resolve that problem. Here's how much it costs. Okay. If you are customizing your price for a client, See, now the assumption is that, that, that they know how much they should pay for this. And they don't know, because if they knew that already, they'd be further ahead. Okay, so I've said all that. I've, I've, said, I've said all that, and I believe what I just said, by the way. That, that's, a, that's a core, fundamental base structure. Now, in the spirit of productizing, if you've got a productized service, again, kind of that core scope of work, uh, finite price, finite time frame, finite uh, scope of work. If you've, if you've got that, it, it can make sense to create pricing tiers. That can make sense. So for maximum scope, if you will, you know, here's the price for, um, um, you know, for uh, uh, maximum scope, minimum scope, right? Here's the price. And then there's, a, then there's an option in, in between. There's the price. Now, if you develop pricing tiers, that scope should change. Right, you, you should be doing more for the for the for the larger price and doing less for the lesser price. Right, I mean that 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 also makes sense. Um, so so can you do that? Sure, you can do that. There is some creativity to what I'm describing. There's some art to what I'm describing. So you've got to do this in, in such a way where it's fair to you and fair to them. You got to you got to think through this. There's no there's no hardcore you know kind of just do it just this way. Um, yeah, so Ahmed, Ahmed is, 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 is offering a good, a good thought there. So that's, a, that's a, a way of thinking about it. But before you start to customize pricing, right now I'm talking to, to Denise and everybody else, before you, before you start to get all uh, uh, creative and slick with your pricing model, think more deliberately about the problem you're solving, what's the appropriate scope, price, and time frame to solve it. What does it take to solve the problem? And once you're clear about that, then we can talk about, you know, negotiating with price if that's appropriate. But you, what you'll find is that in, in, mo in most arrangements, it's not a pricing conversation. Don't get caught manipulating price. Eh. Fix the dog on problem. Point to it, see it, confirm it, and then fix it. You'll find that pricing becomes much less of a, of a conversation. So I may have over answered that. I may have over answered that. Um, so treat tiers like trim levels on a vehicle. We can go with that, Denise. We can go with that. Treat, treat tiers like trim levels on a vehicle. So in the spirit of what I'm, of what I'm offering you here is, is do you understand the core value of the car first? Because the core value of the car is $20,000, $40,000, $50,000. 
$60,000, $80,000. That's how much the car costs, right? So we're already in a $40,000 conversation. Now you add a little trim, maybe that adds 5,000 more. You add a little this, maybe that adds 2,000 more. You add a little that, maybe the whole kit together adds $10,000 more. But we were already in a $40,000 conversation. Fixing the problem is a $40,000 conversation. You see what I'm saying? So uh, I know I can't see you, Denise. You can see me, but I, I can't see you. But I, I'm talking to everybody right now. The core, you got to get the core center of it right, right? You did fix it first. And then, and then, and then you, you can talk about the trim, you know? Um, seriously, fix it and, 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 look, and look your prospective client in the eye and say, we're about to fix this now. Like you gotta be, you gotta be clear and solid in that conversation first. The reason why I'm hitting so hard on this is because as marketing people, you know a lot of marketing stuff, and you can play marketing games on yourself for weeks, on months, on years. You can be sitting at your own desk playing with pricing and playing with structures and and playing with marketing models and 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 customer journey flows and you can do that to yourself you can spin yourself around with all that marketing stuff and i'm trying to take that stuff off the table i'm trying to eliminate as much as much of that extra as possible and remind you about what's most important where the real hardcore bottom line value is it's in solving the problem all right so said all that anything else uh so so final call for questions i'll i'll, I'll check over here uh, one more time um, to see if, if any other questions uh, have come through. So what you're feeling from me right now is how the program is structured, right? I've got a program. This is how the way I'm talking to you right now is how the program is structured. We focus on the hardcore fundamentals, cl client acquisition, client service, client retention. Get those systems in your business. Refine those systems for your business right? Get them clear. And then when you are clear on those things, then you can press forward most aggressively. There's a link up, down, left, and right where you, where you, you, can, you can click so we can have a conversation about your particular agency, your particular services, and see if my program is a, is a match, if it actually solves your problem. We focus on LinkedIn for client, uh, um, uh, for, um, client acquisition. We, 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 we focus on LinkedIn as, as a core place for that. Folks are already having success and feeling good and getting momentum for that to create new conversations. We focus on productized services, specifically one service. Focus on creating one core productized service that you are excited to deliver and they are excited to buy. And we focus on a client retention model that makes sense so that more of your standing arrangements become retainer arrangements. This is done by design. It's not done by accident. It's not done by luck. It's not done by hope. It's not done by watching 100 YouTube videos, even videos like this one. It's done with your intentional design. So if I can help you design it, I'd love to help you do that. That's what the program is all about. We've got it all laid it out. Laid out. All right. So Denise has a comment here, and I'm going to let this be the closing thought. She says, yes, I was stuck on, on establishing base pricing, but this makes perfect sense. I'll start with, with base pricing packages and work from there. Thanks. Absolutely. So, Denise, even in your word choice here, right, um, I'll start with base pricing packages. Nope. You'll start with a base pricing package. One. Right? So, I, I know by package you mean productized service. I know that that's what you mean. What's the productized service? How much does it cost? Not how much do they cost. How much does it cost? Figure it out, figure it out, all right? So, uh, hey everybody, thank you so much for attending today's video. Uh, I'll see everybody next week and keep winning. Talk to you soon.